Okay, so um, we're just going to kind of talk about some of these things in more detail. Uh, we have the projected impacts of climate change on freshwater flows. You can see some of these um, real hot spots in the desert southwest through Central America, desert Patagonia, um, all throughout Europe and Central Asia, South Africa and Australia. You see these hot spots where um, we're going to see projected decreases in mean annual runoff, um, water shortages. And we can project these things using really complicated climate models. Um, our ab ability to do this has really come very far in the past few years. So climate change impacts on streams, we're going to see warming air and water temperatures, but we're really going to see altered precipitation patterns, and that will lead to altered flooding regimes. Um, we're going to see reduced snowpack, we're going to see earlier melting of snow, which all influences what's called the hydrograph, we'll get into that later. Um, we're going to see increased evaporative losses and human consumption, and then interactions of all of these things with invasive species and nutrient pollution. Um, and so climate change is really what created what um, uh, scientists involved in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, has called a no analog world, meaning that we've never seen this kind of stuff before. And it's really hard to predict how things are going to interact to change systems. But we're gonna do our best to predict it and to protect them and to restore systems moving forward. So freshwater species are at a unique um, risk of extinction. Here you can see, this is a, a figure from the Nature Conservancy, and it shows you the groups that are most imperiled. So freshwater mussels and crayfish, amphibians, freshwater fish, right? These are all freshwater organisms and they're all at the top of the list, above things like flowering plants, conifers, ferns, beetles, then we have an aquatic organism, dragonflies and damselflies, reptiles, sometimes aquatic, butterflies and skippers, sometimes aquatic, but we'll talk about that more in aquatic entomology, um, and some mammals and birds. So a lot of these organisms um, are vulnerable, they're imperiled, um, they might be extinct already. Uh, and a lot of them happen to be freshwater obligates. So two thirds of all freshwater mussels are at risk of extinction. Almost one in 10 are already extinct, we think. It's really difficult to study freshwater mussels, but there are research groups that do um, all over the world. One half of all crayfish are already in jeopardy. 50% of all turtles are threatened. Over 40% of stoneflies are at risk. And about 40% of freshwater fish and amphibians are also at risk. 18% um, of dragonfly and damselfly species. So here we have um, a figure, this is from the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, looking at extinctions per thousand species in different millennia. So in the, in the distant past, in the fossil record, we find marine species and mammals, um, and we find that about one for every thousand mammal species, less than one went extinct every millennium in the fossil record. Versus the recent past, these are known extinctions, Mammals, birds, and amphibians were up closer to, you know, this is a logarithmic scale, so maybe this is like 80, 80, 90 percent, or sorry, 80 or 90 um, species out of a thousand for mammals and birds, but up to a hundred and maybe uh, almost 200 species of amphibians per 1,000 have gone extinct in the recent past. And this is future modeled extinction. So it's part of the sixth major extinction that's connected to humans. Um, we're predicting 10 times higher um, extinction rates than the current rate and much higher than the long-term average that we find in the fossil record. So unless we do something about it, right? Here we can see the percentage of red-listed freshwater amphibian species. So the red list is a more global effort to track endangered species. The Endangered Species Act just works with in the United States. And so we can see um, these really high rates of um, red listed species for amphibians in particular parts, especially over here in Japan and New Zealand, a lot of island nations and the Caribbean. Um, so we see these hot spots where amphibians are really in trouble. And here we can see hot spots for at risk fish and mussel species. Um, we're doing pretty well in the Pacific Northwest for some of these organisms. Um, you have these really cool hot spots of biodiversity in um, parts of the, the Southeast. 
that are also at risk of, of extinctions. Um, but if you zoom in at the number of freshwater fish species at risk, again, you know, Washington looks okay when we see these um, really high rates of risk for freshwater species. Um, but, you know, what we have are at risk salmon stocks. And so um, salmon, salmon stocks wouldn't necessarily be considered purely freshwater species. And so I think that's why they're not on the other, the other graphs. And so what, what we see here is this is where, where the Pacific Northwest has major problems. And what, this is why the Nature Conservancy has doubled down in its efforts to save salmon populations. Um, and some of the papers we're gonna read are about salmon in particular. So we do have lots of regional at-risk salmon stocks around where we live. Um, these are some of the salmon. This is kind of a hard figure to read, but just around, um, you know, around us, we have sockeye and bull trout um, kind of at risk, bull trout, chinook and chum, um, different parts. We have other types of uh, salmon that are at risk in other watersheds in Washington. All right, so uh, if you haven't taken a break, you might take a break. Uh, I'm gonna move on to properties of water.